We have two outstanding speakers come and enlighten us about their life. First one is an inspiring speech talking about Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss Climate Survivor. I can bring it up that way. For ancient tree. Let's be inspired. Pay attention. We start with yay! <laughs> and um, oh, for your uh, thing, heart only personal experience. me back my 15 million years. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking about the Romer's Gap. There's 15 million years missing from the geological record. And I want it back. Actually, even with given the daylight savings time, they're like upset about one hour. There's 15 <laughs> million years. They call it the Romer's Gap, and basically what's happening there is between, uh, it's uh, 360 million years ago to 345 million years ago, there's like almost no fossil record. There's, there's nothing. Like, what happened? There's, like, there's maybe some trace fossil, but there's nothing. Except there is one light and this, inside this big void this big darkness of 15 minutes. There's one light. A little kooky odd tree. Yeah. Tree. A tree that fell over. It, it lived at the side of a big lake, a big deep lake. And one of those ancient earthquakes 360 million years ago, when, and it fell over into the lake and slid and some sediment went on top of it and it became a fossil. <gasps> <laughs> this tree is called Sanfordia caudalis caudalis Sanfordia caudalis densifolia. Scientific name. Now this this is what? Why? I mean, but here's the thing: is this is the only thing that an entity, a living thing, that survived in this 15 million year gap? This we have. Because what 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 happened to the life, and what about before and after, and this this evolutionary thing? Because I mean, I gotta break it to everybody. Evolution does exist. I mean, think about it. There's at one point there's no dinosaurs, and another point there's dinosaurs. Where did they come from? <laughs> it evolved. But this is actually approximately 80 million years before the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs didn't exist. So. What do we have here? Let's take a little look at what this is. This is the Romer's Gap, is what they call it. 15 million years. Now, let's say before the Romer's Gap, there was the Devonian period. And this is like uh, where fish started to start coming on land. <laughs> So they call them pteropods. So you're in the coelacanth, right? There's like this little fish with a little knobby. <laughs> <that is. laughs> this sort of thing. And when it comes to plants, they're more like ferns that are like, you know, yay high and they're twisty and curly stuff. All right? Now, 15 million years, what? And then after that, the Carboniferous period starts to begin. And that's when you have fish with fins, sharks start to happen, and things of that nature. Well, um, let me go to the expert. Okay, I found this in this thing. It's called an ancient tree 
clues to Earth's past in the science section in the paper. Usually something you just sort of brush right over. I looked at this was like, what's so special about this? Okay, to give a clue about den densifolia, when they found this thing, they, they had a piece of it and maybe another piece of it they called trace fossils, but this one they found the whole thing. So they were really quite amazed. Robert Gastaldo, a geological professor at Colby University in Maine, calls it, uh, it looks like an upside down toilet brush. <laughs> <laughs> Our poor little ancient hero tree <laughs> called a toilet brush, an upside down toilet brush. <laughs> and he says it, it's, it's top heavy and very Seussian, as in Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. And most likely remained upright by intertwining its branches to hold on to other stuff. So here's an upside down toilet brush with probably fern like curlies that's reaching out and holding on to stuff. <laughs> Be that, that thing. A, a quick picture of trees back then. This is before there's like ferns that are all curly and stuff like that that are low to the ground. And then they got wooded trees, trees with actual wood that, you know, this is like millions of years, see, so puts anyone to sleep. <laughs> and these, these boral trees uh, are tall. And they're all trees, they're all getting the sunlight. So there's the tall trees with the canopy getting the sunlight up here. And then there's the little ferns down there getting sunlight at the base. But what's Densifolia doing? Sanford Fordia. <laughs> It's halfway up, midway in the canopy, and it's holding on with this little curly thing <laughs> going, I get this middle raise. <laughs> so it's like adapting to this weird zone. So this is not just a s amazing because it's a single example in a gap of 15 million years, but it's also a bizarro adaptation in that evolution of finding the niche, finding your little space where you can gotta be me with the little curly branches or something. This other person, uh, Oliver, Olivia King of St. Mary University said, this is like finding a cactus in the middle of a Canadian boral forest. So if you imagine those giant, giant forests, right? You're like, oh, look at this big forest. We're talking bears. And there's a cactus there. Like, what? Yeah. It's <laughs> akin to that. Now, this is a, a quarry. This is found in a quarry of Valley Waters. Valley Waters is in New Brunswick. It's an active private quarry of Can in Canadian's Stonehammer UNESCO Global Geopark. Because, you know, we want to get tickets to the park you, that you want to go to the global geopark. And in this valley, it was once a swampy tropical ecosystem with a big rift lake, deep water lake, running atop a fault zone, which is much like um, Lake Victoria in Africa. This is the one with the gigantic waterfall. You might see it in Avatar or something. <laughs> this kind of foresty thing. This is the atmosphere of our little dense folia. Yeah. So <clears throat> they're wondering, this is diversifying in this hundred foot, well, they had this mid canopy niche. So they figure, what happened, what about this 15 million year thing? 15 million years are gone. Well, it started with the hand Hanger, Hangenberg event, which is one of those extinction events in geologic. You know how many extinction events are in the geological ton? Well, after Precambrian, it's like one of the top five extinction events. Like 50% of the marine life is gone and all this kind of stuff. And they're trying to figure, was it happening with a supernova? Was it a volcano? Was it a glacier? They don't know, but there was climate flux for about over 100,000 years. So it was a big thing. So here's this little tree 
in the middle of this darkness, this big void, that is like, it dared that you be, you know, you do you. That's what this little tree was doing. It's halfway ferny. It's halfway, you know, it's like inventing Dr. Seuss 360 million years ago. It's clinging on. It's halfway above and not quite to the top. And it's like this little inspirational, hopefully, I'm, I'm not you. I don't know how much inspiration you get from here, but <laughs> this is a tree which is like bizarrely unique. And it's so fascinating that out of this gigantic geological enigma of the Romer's Gap, that this is the representative of life. <laughs> this little ancient tree. So I hope this is a little uh, inspirational for perseverance, find your niche, fill your niche, dare to be you, and just remember, you, you, you can Sanfredonia cordalis densifolia, because it is something that will create a buoyant atmosphere in your inspiration. Thank you. Ooh. Well, this is why I come to Toastmasters. I get so inspired and confident knowing that I came from an upside down toilet brush. <laughs> The study of DNA of that toilet brush is compared to ours. Maybe we are really related. So let's take a two minutes.